Hello viewers, my name is Andrew Dean, Vice President of Research and Innovation at Lakehead University and I'm inviting you one, once again to another edition of Research Matters. So today we're going to meet Dr. Leela Paxad, an Associate Professor and Graduate Coordinator in the Department of Chemical Engineering at Lakehead University. Dr. Paxad is also a Lakehead University Research Chair in Respiratory Aerosol Dynamics and with applications to pharmaceutical drug delivery. Welcome, Lila. Really great to have you here today. Thank Could you please share with us and our viewers some of your current research interests? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, the area of my interest uh, just is in researching uh, uh, the fundamental aspects of fluid dynamics, especially in multiphase flow. Um, basically, I'm, I use uh, experimental and numerical approaches uh, to study the behavior of the solid particles, liquid droplets, and gas bubbles in a continuous phase. Uh, during my master, PhD, and uh, postdoc, I have gained uh, experience in multiphase flow and non-Newtonian fluids, which are the complex fluids that we are facing daily, like, for example, ketchup or hand cream. But at the end of the 2019, um, uh, but just uh, when I joined Lakehead in 2014, uh, for the first five years of my research, I mean between 2014 to 2019, I focus on multi-phase flow uh, research with applications in different industries, like just wastewater treatment industries or pharmaceutical industries, biochemical industries. And during this research, I, I was able just to establish a multi-phase flow research laboratory. Then at the end of the 2019, beginning of 2020, I have started a new research uh, uh, just a um, uh, pathway on um, applications of multiphase flow, which is my expertise, but in the respiratory drug delivery. The reason that this area is of my interest is just, unfortunately, over 300 million people worldwide suffer from the, just the respiratory conditions, like asthma or COPD. But we know that uh, inhalation therapy has been kind of successful in controlling this disease, but the efficiency of the drug delivery to the lungs is very low. In some cases, even low as 5%. Mm. Therefore, um, to answer your questions, my just, um, I'm seeking for an efficient method of respiratory drug delivery to enable lower doses of medications uh, to be administrated or taken by patients and therefore reducing the potential side effects for patients. And this research area has been kind of empowered during the COVID pandemic because I observed that respiratory drug delivery kind of uh, could be a solution for this tragic situation that we have had, just we were facing globally. It's really interesting about the the efficiency of delivery and, and how then you would want to be able to say, well, can we use less drugs or can we maybe even save on the number of drugs and have this more more effective? And, you know, people have puffers all the time, but you, know, you kind of think, well, is it really getting to where you want it to go? And I guess that's really about your research is making that efficiency better. Yes, because we, um, if we focus on the just the drug delivery, because it just again is a fluid dynamics, because we are dealing with the drug aerosols or drug particles. And these drug aerosols and particles would like us to travel through the mouth throat and reach to the lungs. Therefore, if we can just kind of improve these kind of travel or just this delivery, we, we, we are going just to reduce the side effects for patients which are they are suffering from and also reduce the amount of the, just the medications that they, they take and, and at the end is going just to be the kind of the efficiency of the delivery to the really side of the, just the, uh, the target side in the lungs are going just to be improved. So it must be a combination of understanding the mechanics of the delivery device, the flow of drug, drug design or the drug materials, but also the physiological 
part exactly. of the body as well. Exactly. And how they yeah. interact with each other. Yeah, I just say, and this research area is just kind of can bring together the fields of engineering and science mm. to achieve the best results for, for at the end for patients, which is going just to be somehow something that we are looking forward in, in world. Now, we're very pleased and happy to have you as, uh, as a Lakehead University research chair. Is, uh, is the research you're doing as part of that chair similar or? Yes, yeah, no? just uh, thanks to this research kind of uh, field, uh, I was awarded by the just uh, in 2023 as a Lakehead uh, research chair on this, on this subject. Okay. Yes. So it seems like there's lots of important applications of this to the biotech biotechnology industries and pharmaceutical industries. Is there the connections to those industries? Are they interested? Are there any kind of patents of developing or? Yeah, just, you know, um, this uh, research field that I have uh, just uh, earlier explained is very young, it's only mm -hmm. four years okay. old. And I believe in uh, just a kind of uh, high quality research and I aim to establish a, um, a strong foundations. Recently by publishing our findings in good journals, um, I, we are getting uh, kind of, uh, we are gaining uh, recognitions from different fields like uh, pharmaceuticals, medicines, even um, research centers. And then just kind of I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of forming partnership with people in this area and also their orga um, just different organizations that we so have. So it would probably be a ways away before any kind of clinical trials or anything like that? Or yeah, for example, one of the uh, just pharmaceutical company from Germany, uh, we are working now w um, just with them. Just they are generously provide us with their inhalers. Okay. And um, just to be tested, examined, and also we are going just to uh, use them. I, I mean, I'm we are using them as their inhaler models in order to, to understand the um, kind of the fundamentals of this research field. Are there a lot of regulations that govern inhalers and that you need to be aware of when you're doing your research or not? Um, no, just the, 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 the kind of the drugs that we are using, it just are, uh, are just I have been, I have get kind of some permissions for, for using these inhalers. It just, they are user friendly. And uh, for the modeling parts, because we do have a numerical parts too, that um, we are trying just to um, develop comprehensive CFD models that can be a best representative of in vivo, I mean real kind of uh, uh, cases by considering different features like, uh, uh, for example, considering something like mucus layer in mouth and throat in our model or considering the environmental parameters like for example relative humidity or ambient temperatures and the performance of the drug delivery for example in Canada we might have just the cold weather therefore uh, how much this cold weather can affect or impact on the drug delivery for patients mm -hmm. or for example considering the presence of the tongue uh, just and its movement in our model or just the movement of the throat because of the inhalation and exhalation. When we can see we add these features to our model, we are going just to have a kind of a better model uh, closer to the in vivo or real cases that we have that through this modeling, we can get best results. That's wonderful. Yes. Well, first of all, thank you very much for introducing to your, our research. It's already fantastic. Uh, we're going to take a very short break now and be right back with our discussion with Dr. Paxet and meet two of her graduate students. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching Research Matters, brought to you by Lakehead University. So before the break, we had Dr. Leela Paxet mention that her research lab is studying respiratory drug delivery, focusing on two important types of inhalers and how they can improve drug delivery. So now we're really pleased to be joined by two of her graduate students, Farnia Dastorian, who is working on a project evaluating the effectiveness of conventional inhaler type PMDI, and Taha Sadagi, who is working on a project evaluating the effectiveness of advanced inhalers, SMI. So before we get into this, what does PMDI stand for? <laughs> PMDI is one of the oldest uh, type of inhaler. It stands for Pressurized Metal Dose Inhaler. 
the blue usual one you can see anywhere that the blue ones. Okay. Does that and have SMI? Uh, SMI stands for Soft Mist Inhaler. Uh, it's kind of a new generation of inhalers with uh, lower plume velocity, uh, but it has like longer duration than pressurized metal dose inhalers or dry powder inhalers. So as you mentioned, the blue one that many of us see, would, uh, yes. would this other one also be familiar to people? Yeah, this is, this is the Soft Mist Inhaler okay. that we use in our studies. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> so welcome, Harlan. Uh, can you please tell us about your academic background and research interests and how you got to this point in your career? <laughs> Thank you. I want to first appreciate that you're having us here. It's a really good opportunity. And my background for my bachelor and my master, I done back in Iran. I, my field was chemical engineering. And then I switched it to the chemical engineering and environmental. During my master, I was doing for the wastewater treatment. So always being uh, interdisciplinary of the two major was always my interest. So my background was full experimental, but during the courses and different projects, I was doing modeling as well, but I never was my focus. So when I was searching for PhD position, when I saw Dr. Paxad lab research, and this is a multi-phase fluid lab, and I know I usually work it a little bit of, you know, a small project with that uh, because we are working with Fluent. It's a very commercial and well-known um, simulation model. So I was always having my mind because now the industry is changing. So many things goes with the software. So I always had in my mind. And then when I s saw that the fact that is working for the inhaler and another interdisciplinary measure, it caught my eyes and it's like, I want to apply for that position for sure. Okay. So yes. then you came to Canada to do a PhD. Yes. Yeah. And how far along were you on the PhD? Uh, I'm, I came to Lake in 2019, okay. so I'm in my last year right now. Okay, that's wonderful. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about the project that you're currently working on and what excites you about that project? So uh, our project, um, for me and my uh, peer, um, our first focus was working with the PMDI because uh, PMDI is one of the oldest and the common one used. And as Dr. Paxad explained, it has a lower efficiency as well. But it's still useful and um, we cannot just neglect it and put it aside. So as an engineer and a researcher, all of our goal is just modifying whatever instrument that we have. So. <coughs> Our, pro uh, our project actually divided into sections. One is experimental and one is numerical model, which we are working with ANSYS fluent. So um, as uh, Taha showed the inhalers, we have our inhaler. So we uh, start with the one experimental model. We go through, see how the particle deposited. We have different type of instrument as well. We are working with company Copley, so it has uh, one device as NGI, next generation impactor, which help us to put whatever aerosols uh, coming out of the inhaler after actuation, they put it and gathering in a, like a different meshes and see what particle size distribution actually goes after each puff. The reason is because each uh, for our lung to reach that uh, drug to the lung, it should have a specific particle diameter. For example, it should be between one to five micrometer. So that's why we go through the experimental. I gather the data for that. And then I, because every experimental has only mutation. So after that, I must start using the simulation model in numerical method and adding up my own uh, parameter that I might in a real life gonna be more effective rather than the in vitro. So that's so what it sounds like a lot of <laughs> background work in like numerical methods and yes. modeling Model. to figure out the best thing. But is, are you really trying to work at designing the, the apparatus itself to be more effective? So there is an uh, issue with the apparatus because uh, if you see, look at the inhaler shape, and you can see it here as well, the structure inside is so complicated and the air that goes through that uh, the fluid of that has a very different and complicated situation. So it's, it takes so much time for computational and go for the accuracy. 
So right now for the designing, we cannot directly go designing and get the result after that and say, I changed that and I can see that point. But one of my co-worker, uh, she's uh, doing changing the nozzle, the nozzle that actually create the plume and the particle for the delivery. She's working on that, changing the difference of uh, what if we have instead of one nozzle with a one like a cone shape, what we have two orifices on that. So how it's going to change the drug delivery efficiency. So we're working on that part of it, but uh, it's not that easy because it goes with the medical situation. We, if we are not that free, like industrial, say, this design going to change it. It's long way to reach the commercial version of it. But we are s searching for that parameters that how much it's going to be efficient for that, for the designing part. Okay, so you're fairly far along in your, your project and your, in your research and your PhD. How does this maybe fit with future academic roles? For the future, uh, there's one good thing about chemical engineering is always, you're always observing the process. Either going to be industrial or going to be medical. So <coughs> for us, because we are working with experimental and the numerical method, so we can easily go for the uh, pharmaceutical companies as well for the designing, or we can work for the uh, data analysis of that. Because we know what the process goes, we know what the data means, and we can work on the control of that quality of the data. So it can both be industrial, the post-processing of the design, or we can work for R&D of the pharmaceutical uh, companies. Great. For that. So Taha, I'm going to ask the same question. How did your academic background her and how did it bring you here? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so my academic journey started uh, in Iran, uh, where I earned both my bachelor's and master's degree in polymer engineering at Iran Polymer and Petrochemical Institute. Uh, during those years, I was uh, working with uh, plastics, elastics, uh, nanocomposite, and medical equipment material. Uh, I was getting familiar with the process of designing them and how important it is to choose the right material and how accurate you must be to have the highest efficiency uh, for those medical equipments design. Uh, after finishing my master's, I start uh, looking for like research topics and I got uh, I, I found Dr. Paksat. Uh, we had researching comments. Uh, I got familiar with the topic and it was a really hot topic in Canada and all around the world. Uh, that time I wasn't uh, like, uh, I didn't know much about uh, computational fluid dynamics, but uh, after searching and find the research gaps in this uh, field, uh, the experimental setup, uh, setups we could have in the labs and the, uh, you know, the uh, numerical uh, methods that you can have the availability of uh, what you can do with the numerical setup. All these things like uh, got me more interested. I was uh, really interested to uh, get this position. So I applied and got the position and now I'm here as a fourth year PhD candidate uh, at biotechnology program in Lake University. That's great. And tell us a bit about your research project that's part of your degree. Uh, so so far, I've published uh, two papers, two journal papers, and I'm in the middle of writing the third one. Uh, during these uh, research, uh, during these uh, papers, I try to cover uh, one research gap in this field, in the field of uh, drug delivery uh, to the lung and computational fluid dynamics. So, in the first paper, I uh, evaluate the soft mist inhaler aerosol velocity size distribution and diameter uh, in human mouth. Uh, so as I uh, showed you before, this is the soft mist inhaler I chose to work with because it's a new generation uh, inhaler. However, the efficiency, the drug efficiency to the lung is uh, still under debate. So that's the reason I chose to work with uh, soft mist inhalers. So uh, how we did that in the first paper we wanted to uh, see the effect of changing the SMI nozzle uh, angle and position inside human mouth 
to see how much drug will be deposited inside the mouth, uh, to see what happens if a patient uh, like uh, hold the inhaler, inhaler in the wrong position, use it in the wrong position, how much of the drug will be deposited in the mouth, or uh, better to say, will be wasted. Because uh, the more drugs deposited in the mouth, uh, the more side effects we have to deal with, and we don't want that. So uh, after finishing the first paper, I can say uh, the result of that paper uh, could be really beneficial in uh, designing new add-ons like sensors and uh, mouthpieces that can uh, notify patients when they are using inhalers in the wrong position. Uh, in the second paper, uh, I consider a nasal cavity. Uh, this is a, like, you can consider this as a geometry of human uh, mouth throat. So I consider a nasal cavity on top of the induction port. This is not induction port. Induction port is a kind of L shape. It has an L shaped design. Uh, it's not a rep uh, good representative of human mouth throat, but uh, still it's uh, a standard way for a pharmaceutical company to characterize aerosol based on their uh, diameter and size distribution. So I consider a nasal cavity to uh, take the effect of airflow coming from nasal cavity and the combination of flow rate from uh, oral cavity and nasal cavity inside the uh, geometry and its effect on particle deposition and particle uh, size distribution. And uh, I can say that uh, paper resulted in, a, like, that was a big achievement for me because I found that, for example, if a patient used equal uh, flow rate inhalation from both oral and nasal cavity, like let's say 15 liter per, mi uh, per minute from both nasal and oral, it resulted in less particle deposition inside the mouth. That's what we are looking for. It means more drugs went to the lungs. Uh, and for the third paper that I'm currently <coughs> writing, uh, we are working on pediatric airways. Uh, we want to investigate the effect of tongue position inside the mouth uh, on particle deposition and uh, airflow pattern inside the pediatric AV. Uh, but during these projects, uh, like beside this project, we also did some side projects as well. We like compare the numerical methods that we could have and see their effect, see their effect on, uh, for example, particle deposition and how they can uh, track the particles inside human mouth and choose the right one for our models. That sounds really exciting. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to take another short break. We're really glad to have both of you and to let us know what your experience is and um, how you came to these projects. It's great. And we're going to be right back and continue our discussions after that. Okay. Thank you. Welcome back, viewers. So it was really a pleasure to meet two of your students. So now we're going to welcome back Leela. He's going to share a little bit more about some of the other research that your lab is currently working on. Yes, yeah. as I mentioned earlier that uh, I'm working on the fluid dynamics and multi-phase flow. Uh, I do have two uh, kind of uh, main categories rather than uh, drug delivery. Uh, one of them is uh, gas liquid in mixing tank and uh, in bubble column with applications in wastewater treatment industries. And then uh, another one is just a liquid liquid uh, flow in again mixing tank and oscillatory uh, baffle columns, OBC columns with applications for pharmaceutical, cosmetics and biochemical and biotechnology industries. That both both uh, cat uh, both just uh, research uh, kind of fields are active and recruiting uh, students, which which is my main research interest uh, from my studies as PhD and master students. I think it's one of the things that maybe people don't realize about researchers at the CAD and at other universities that one of the key things is training that next generation of researchers you know, through our graduate students or our postdoctoral fellows. And as we saw with your students, you know, that kind of passion that's being generated by your research is exceptional. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah. Now, research always takes funding. Can you tell us who are some of the funders that are behind some of the research? Yes, uh, currently my, my just my projects are funded by uh, NSERC, Natural uh, Science and uh, 
engineering <laughs> councils of Canada, and uh, of uh, and uh, the um, just my um, the funding from my uh, research chair at Lake. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Certainly, funding funding drives many things, especially the support of our students. Exactly. Where could where could the viewers know more about your research? How would they have, have the ability to f f do more, find out more? Yeah. First of all, I would like just to introduce my uh, research laboratory. It just uh, as I mentioned has been established. Uh, it's a multi-phase flow research laboratory, which is located in Cases Building, uh, FB uh, two thousand. Uh, 17 mm. room and uh, this has two sectors uh, one of them is just one sector is the experimental sector which is equipped with the electrical resistance tomography um, mixing tanks with different implants in, uh, in and uh, just the um, oscillatory baffle columns OBC and uh, support prop which I just uh, I purchased through my uh, CFI um, funding uh, that I have had and uh, a next generation impactor and uh, the numerical sector is equipped with uh, five uh, supercomputers and uh, 25 uh, licenses ANSYS fluent licenses and we are working with the uh, LU clusters and also with the uh, Niagara and Graham uh, clusters from the Compute Canada. Our, re our laboratory is ready just to take any tests and examinations uh, regarding the multi-phase flow and uh, of course the drug delivery and our, uh, our fundings and results from this laboratory uh, always mm, just uh, published uh, in uh, great journals and um, any information about our progress in our research is going just to be available for everyone. I really glad how you mentioned about the need for high performance computing to yes. to work on your research. Yeah. yeah. So improving the drug delivery of inhalers has important implica implications for healthcare, especially for individuals with respiratory, respiratory disease who rely on these medications. As we thaw, saw through our conversation with Leela and her graduate students, leveraging the support of collaborators and industry partners is crucial to ensuring that any design improvement will get to the market and into the hand of consumers faster. So thank you very much for joining us today on the edition of Research Matters. And until next time, my name is Andrew Dean, Lakehead University's Vice President in Research. <laughs>